Hi everybody, my name is Kristana and this is my YouTube channel. I am the owner and creator of Bella Renovare by Kristana and today what I'm going to do is go over how to fix the top of a piece that maybe seems unfixable. So the piece that we're going to be working on today is, it's actually Ikea furniture, but Ikea doesn't only just make laminate particle board type furniture. They also make furniture that you build yourself that is solid wood. So this piece that we're going to be working on is pine and it's got a couple little um, stains on it. So I'm going to show you how we can fix the top of this and kind of So here's the top it. of this piece. It's got a little bit of staining. You can see that um, this, there's probably something that has been set on here, maybe water or something like that. We've got a little bit of scuffing right here. So we're going to fix this piece up. It is solid wood. It's a pine. And so we are going to be able to sand this down, give it a new life. So there's a few things that you're going to want today because we're going to be sanding. I like to use a mask. You need to use a mask. You always need to use safety precautions when you're working with furniture. So anytime I'm stripping furniture, I always use gloves. I actually use a more higher quality glove, but we're not going to be stripping today. I always use a mask because anytime you inhale stuff, once you start sanding things, um, they become harmful to your health. So we are going to have gloves. We're going to have, so we're going to have a mask. We're going to have gloves. You're going to want a rag. I have Dixie Bell's no pain gel stain in Walnut. And then I also have my orbital sander. So I'm going to use my orbital sander, but the key to using an orbital sander is to start with the lower number and work your way up. You don't want to go jump around. So you want to start lower, which is a grittier, and then you want to work your way up to a finer grit. Okay. So we have the 80 and then we also have 120. So we're going to start with 80 and move our way up to 120. I also have some steel wool just in case we want to do it's the um, this is the triple zero just in case I want to do one last go at it after I use the orbital sander to kind of smooth out anything that maybe isn't super smooth so stay tuned. so I'm gonna put my mask on but before I do I'm gonna explain this to you so that you can actually hear me these are 80 grit any of your sandpaper will always say what the grit is on the back of it this is my orbital sander. I use a Bosch sander. I really like it. It's a great company. And what you do, this is the hook one, the hook and tooth. So I'm going to stick my sander on there, sanding pad on there, and it's going to stick. Now, the key to this and not to get swirl marks is to make sure that you're going easy. Don't push down super hard. Just kind of let the sander do its thing, but also maintain control. That way it doesn't get out of control. So I'm going to put my mask on if you can hear it. Also a thing, good thing to know, I use a mask that has a, um, that always has a filter on it. I'm going to start. Okay, so you guys can see that we started sanding it and we've sanded away a lot of the excess finish. And you can see right here, if we get a little bit closer, we have managed to pull up some of that that was right here that was black. We have sanded that away. And with the final sanding with the 120, this should take it away totally. So I'm gonna continue sanding and we'll be back. So for this next part, I have sanded down the entire thing, but we still have a couple spots right here. So what I'm going to do is change my pad out. As you can see right here, we've got a little bit of buildup. So I'm going to change the pad, just stick with the 80 and go over this piece one more time to try to sand out these parts. So I have sanded down this entire piece. We did it 
two different pads or we did we used two pads of 80 grit and so now I'm going to switch out my pad and do a 120 grit and go over it to kind of try to smooth things out getting the any last minute imperfections off. So this is the 120 grit. Okay so I did two passes through with the 80 grit and then one pass through with the 120 grit and next I'm going to use the no pain gel stain it's really good for pine because pine is a soft blotchy wood. So this is gonna give us a more even finish. I'm gonna show you what it looks like now because I think we are ready for stain. Okay, so do you guys remember before there was a lot of spots, there was a huge stain right here. Um, we got most of that stain out and because we're gonna be using gel stain, it's gonna give us a more even surface. So even if there was like a small shadow that we could see, it will cover that up nicely. So we're gonna use walnut. We're gonna use Dixie Belle's No Pain Gel Stain and Walnut. So I have pulled out the No Pain Gel Stain and Walnut by Dixie Belle. I like to use a screwdriver to open it and I've already mixed it, but you wanna take a stir stick and you want to stir it really nicely. You have two options here. You can brush it on with a brush and wipe it off, or you can take a lint-free rag and kind of dip it in and then work it into your wood. Because this is pine, it is going to take this very fast. There's probably not gonna be much excess, but you can take it and put it in here. I like to kind of swirl it around to make sure I'm getting it in. And then I go with the grain. I flip it. So I flip it to a clean part, go with the grain and kind of just wipe it away. So I'm going to continue this on the entire piece. final product. Well, not totally final. This is oil-based, but I'm going to seal it with gator hide. And you can absolutely seal an oil-based stain with a water-based sealer as long as you give the stain an ample amount of time to dry. So I actually will probably let this dry for about 48 to 72 hours before I put any kind of top coat on it that is water-based. So I am going to address a few things because I know that people will have questions. I'm a woodworker by trade, and so I have built a lot of pine furniture, a lot of rustic furniture. And the reason why I go around in circles and then wipe away is because it allows me to get really deep into that grain. Pine is a very soft wood, and so it stains very unevenly. And so that is why when I'm staining pine, I don't use a brush. I usually use a rag, and I wipe the stain into the wood, and then I wipe it away. It's just and my experience has given me a more even finish and it's just the way that I prefer to do it. Everybody has their own way of staining things and doing things, but this is the way that I do it. So if you have a different way, by all means, that is, that's great. Um, you want to make sure you're staying out of direct sunlight when you're staining because it will make your stain dry faster, especially water-based stains will dry extremely fast if you're out in the sunlight. I pulled it outside because we did a video, but generally I would do this probably in my garage or in a workspace that is shielded from the sun. So keep that in mind. Make sure that you're always using your protective gear. So your gloves, your masks, things like that. Again, there are many different ways to do this, but this is just a quick and easy way that I have found to do it when you are working with a piece that is solid wood. I would probably not do this with a veneer piece because usually veneer is a very thin, thin layer of wood over a particle board. And if you sand it down too much, you'll blow through it. So for veneer, I would probably try to use a stripper. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that it was helpful. If you guys ever come across a piece or maybe you've got some staining on one of your pieces and it's a solid wood, it's a super easy fix. And again, I will wait 48 to 72 hours to seal this piece with my gator hide.